Hello everyone. I am Sushmita Sarkar, Assistant Professor, Kripley Department of RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. So today we are going to see the lecture two. So last class, if you remember, we have studied the network model formulation and how do we write the equations, power equations are different buses. How do we write the equations for bus current? Then the formation of Y bus, where we have studied the inspection method. How do we form a Y bus by an inspection method? By taking two rules into mind that uh, basically we have paid that Y bus by uh, keeping two assumptions. Number one, that there is no mutual coupling in the line. And number two, there are no regulated transformers present in the line. So now after learning those concepts of formation of Y bus, let us apply that in an practical problems. Fine, so today, we are going to see that how these Y bus can be formed for a practical system. So uh, let us take the problem number one. So the problem number one says for the line data given in the following table, obtain Y bus by direct method or inspection method. So this is a table of line data. So you can check. So your line number one is nothing but uh, connected between bus number one to two which is having impedance of J.25. Similarly, line number two, so whether you write a serial number or line number, both are same. So that is it, number two, that is two to three, bus number two to three, having an impedance of J.26. Line number three, it's three to four, J.25. Similarly, four to one, one to three is respectively 0.26. I'm very important to look into the table is whether the data is given in the form of impedance or it is given in the form of admittance because usually students go wrong without by reading the by wrong reading of the data so in Haribari they directly take the values and they directly jump into the y bus formation so please look into the table properly and if it is the data is given in the form of impedance the first step is to convert these respective line impedance into admittance Fine. So now let us see how the network looks for that particular table. So I have drawn the table over here by taking the inverse of the individual impedances. So in, when you know, when you take the inverse, you get it as a minus J. So that's how the network looks. One to two, one to four, one to three, two to three and three to four. Fine. Now, how do I apply this inspection method into this particular network and to make a Y bus? So now you can see over here, as you remember, I hope all of you remember that the diagonal elements are called as the uh, self admittances or the driving point admittances. Fine. And off diagonal are called as the transfer admittances. So diagonal elements represents the summation of all the lines admittances which are connected to a particular bus. So now if this is a bus one, so if I want a value of Y11, so basically, fine, so if I want a value of Y11, so Y11 will be Y12, that is your small Y12, that is minus J4, plus Y13, which is minus J3.85, plus Y14 minus J3.85. So summation of all these three lines which are connected to bus one will give me Y11. Similarly, Y22 will be the two lines that is Y12, which is minus J4 plus Y23, which is minus J3.85 will give you the Y22. So Y33 will be this line plus this line plus this line and Y4 will be this line admittance plus this line admittance. So this is all about the diagonal elements. What about the octagonal elements? So all of you can see first thing I have a four bus. So my Y bus matrix will be four cross four matrix. Fine. So in this four cross four matrix, the octagonal element are going to be the negative of the series admittances. Fine. So if Y11, you came to know that Y11 is the addition of this value plus this value plus this value. That is your Y12 plus Y13 plus Y14. So Y12 is going to be the negative of the series admittance of the value of the line between one and two. So the Y12 is going to take the value of J4, not minus J4, it is negative of Y12. So it is minus J4. Y13 is going to be plus J3.85. Y14 is going to be plus J3.85. So off diagonal elements are going to be negative of the series admittances. 
So let us see how it looks. So this is your Y11. As I told you, the lines of the line admittance, you have to add up, add it up, and you'll get minus J11.7. Similarly, Y22, Y33, and Y44, which we have already discussed. Now look at the off-diagonal elements. I told you the off-diagonal elements will be the negative of the line series admittance. So, so please have make a note over here that the elements of the main Y bus are denoted as capital letter and the elements of the element and the value of the line elements are denoted as a small Y. So don't go wrong over here. Fine. So this is your Y12. And since Y bus is a symmetrical matrix, so whether you write Y12 or you put it as Y21, both are same. So I'll be writing plus J4. Similarly, all the lines you will be writing in the same order. And why it is zero? Because the zero indicates in a Y bus that there is absolutely no interconnection between those two buses, which means the two and four has no line. There are no line connected between bus two and four. So if you want to cross check that, we can go back to the network and cross check over here. You can see there is a no connection between line two, a bus two and four. Fine, so there's no line between bus two and four, which means it is directly indicated over there that Y24 or Y42 element is going to be zero. So that's how the Y bus helps us, which is not possible in Z bus because Z bus is a full matrix. Whereas these, if there is no connection between any two buses will be represented as a zero element. And that makes the Y bus as a sparse matrix, okay? So sparse matrix basically means the uh, more number of elements which is shown as zero in an Y bus. Fine, so that's how your matrix looks like right now. Substitute all the values over here. So here you can see that uh, the two, uh, di uh, two off diagonal elements are, which is your Y42 and Y24 are represented as zero, fine. So like this, if in a practical system, we have a thousand cross thousand matrix where we can see many buses are not connected to, to each other. And those particular elements will be represented as zero in the matrix. So which increase the sparsity of Y bus. So this sparsity concept does not exist in a Z bus. So we'll see that also in the later lectures. Fine. So now what are the things which you note, should note over here? It is the Y bus is a singular as it can be observed that the sum of the each column and uh, is zero and row is zero. So let us look over here. So you can see minus J 11.7 plus J4 uh, plus J 3.85 plus J 3.85 will give you zero. Whether you add the row or you add a column, both will give you a zero value. Fine. So. What has happened? This makes the matrix as singular. Fine, so that is the first point you should remember. Now, if shunt admittances are present, where it should have been present, guys? It should have been presented in diagonal elements, okay? Because shunts, as I told you in the last class in the quiz also, that shunt elements will be added if the shunt is added or not, can be directly visualized in the di diagonal elements. So if shunt admittances are present, then the singularity is avoided. So you know if the shunts are present, they are present the diagonal, then if you do the addition of the row or column, the answer will be the summation of the complete shunt admittances. So you will not get a zero value. So the singularity will be avoided in such a case because in such a case, rank of the matrix becomes zero, okay? So now what happens over here? In the absence of shunt admittance, the singularity is avoided by taking one of the regular buses as a reference. So what if in a system, I don't have the effect of uh, line charging admittances? So in that cases, if we don't have, then one of the existing buses has to be considered as a reference bus. And that particular row and column should be eliminated to eliminate the effect of singularity. For an example, now, if we take bus three as a reference bus, then the Y bus is reduced to. So this is your Y bus guys, fine. So this is Y bus. And if I take a bus three, suppose this is a four bus system, Y bus four cross four matrix, we have got it. So now in this, if the third bus is taken as a reference, then the third column and the third row should be eliminated. So we can see that the third column and the third row is, eliminated and your Y bus is reduced to 
3 cross 3. So basically, the size of the y bus is defined as n minus 1 cross n minus 1. So where n is the number of buses. So don't forget that the size of y bus is defined as n minus 1 cross n minus 1, where 1 bus will be considered as your reference bus and n is the number of buses. Fine. So now let us look at the problem 2. In this particular problem, we will take care of the line charging admittances also. Fine. So now you will see the kind, uh, the problem of singularity will not arise in this kind of systems. Fine. So now we have taken a bus 1, 2, 3 and 4. So these are the connections. These are the respective line impedances and these are half line charging admittances. Fine. So if it is written half line charging admittances, then you should considered it as it is. But if in the data it is mentioned as line charging impedances, then you should do divide by 2 and divide by 2. Fine, both the sides, you should take it as j.03 and j.03. Since it is already mentioned as half line charging admittance, then both the sides, you should take it as j.06 and j.06. Fine, so now when we look it over here, so uh, we can see the uh, mistake over there. So here actually it should be a line charging admittances, not half line charging admittances, because I have explained you very clearly that this, this data should be in line charging admittances. If it is a line charging admittances, then you should do it divide by two, fine? So now we'll go to this. So now here you can see it as, since it is a line charging admittances, so my data, my half line charging admittances should be J.06 divided by two. So you get it as J.03 and J.03. So like this, likewise, all the half line charging admittances will be represented in the respective lines. So those values should be divided by two and represented over here. Now find, so now when I find a Y bus over here, you can see guys, there are four buses, but one of the, uh, node. So you basically have five nodes and four buses because ground point reference point is already existing due to the effect of the line charging admittances. Fine. So these ground points are exist. So basically the system is having uh, four buses and uh, one ground point. So five nodes. So now when you write this matrix, this will automatically will be taken as four cross four because the reference point is already being considered. So here, what will happen? Now, when I able to find out Y11, so Y11 is going to be this half line charging admittance plus this series admittance plus this series admittance and this half line charging admittance. You can directly add like this or you can add these two half line charging admittances and put it as the line charging admittance at a particular bus. Fine. So. Let us see how do we write it as, as I told you, Y11 will be written as Y12 plus Y14 plus YSH12 by 2 plus YSH14 by 4. So the respective values, the series, in these are the two lines which are coming from bus number 2 and bus number 4 are connected to your bus number 1. So these two series line admittances will be taken as directly. And if you see over here, this will be divided, half line charging admittances will be divided by Two, okay, so basically when I substitute, this is your half line charging admittance, this is your line admittance, this is your half line charging admittance, and this is your line admittance. So it gives you totally minus J7.79. So similarly, you will be writing all the, and you know these values will only affect the diagonal elements. So only I'll be writing Y11, Y22, Y33, and Y44, and these are the values which we get. And of diagonal, it has no effect on the optical element, so you will get as it is. The value only with the negative sign. So now when I write a uh, Y bus, you can see that the diagonal elements has the effect of uh, C uh, half line charging admittance, where off diagonal elements are the just negative of the series admittances. So you can, the, as soon as you see the zero element in your Y bus, it directly give you an idea that line bus number one and bus number three has no connection, okay? So this is your Y13 position and this is your Y24 position, which means there are no connection between line bus two and bus four and bus one and bus three. So directly they are represented in the form of uh, zero in the Y bus. So as more uh, like zeros represented in the system, this increases the sparsity of the network.
Fine, so for the line data given in the, let us take one more problem. For the line data given in the following table, obtain Y bus using direct method. Fine, so here I have given one more problem where it is already given as half line charging admittances. So this problem is for you, my dear friends. So please uh, take the problem in the same order. Uh, you please carry on. So you know, see there, there are, uh, what will be the cipher? My first question to you, what will be size of this matrix? Just by looking at the data, you should be able to say what is the size of the matrix. Okay, I hope all of you have got it. The size of the matrix will be four cross four because we can see the highest number of buses in the bus code. If you go, it is one to two, one to three, two to three, three to four and four. So highest number which has been given to the bus is four. So basically there are four buses. And since the half line charging admittances are present, so this will be uh, four cross four. Fine. So you can also consider as n as a number of nodes. So if I consider n as a number of nodes instead of number of buses, then it will be easier for you to understand that n minus one cross n minus one will be giving me the size of y bus. Okay. So basically, you also can say that is a bus cross bus matrix. Fine. So this is your j point 0 0.02, j 0 0.03, 0 0.04. So this is, it is mentioned as half line. So please take it as a half line. Don't take it as a line charging element, take it as a half line and substitute these values as it is, don't divide by two. Fine, I hope I'm clear with this simple problem. So let us have a small quiz. Fine, so the first quiz which I put is the part of the Y bus of a power system without line charging admittance, without line charging admittances is Y bus is equal to, these are the diagonal elements that it represents. So what will be the off diagonal elements? So this is a fill in the blanks, those off diagonal elements are not zero. So you guys have to put, you have to solve the network, you have to solve the matrix such that you get the off diagonal values. Here, very important things, thing to note down is, that it is without half line charging. If it is with half line, then it is a bit difficult to solve it. But without half line, we know that summation of all the lines are going to be zero. So the first row, if you take it as zero, and you know the matrix is symmetrical. So if I write over here as X, this also will be X. If I write over here as a Y, then this also will be Y. If I write over here Z, then this also will be Z because Y bus is a symmetrical matrix. So now, if I want to know the value of this X, Y, and Z, a simple logic, because I know when the half line charging admittances are present, the addition of the row or a column will be equal to zero. So just write three simultaneous equation. The first equation will be minus J10 plus X plus Y is equal to zero x minus j15 plus z is equal to zero. y plus z minus j17 is equal to zero. Solve these three simultaneous equations for three unknowns and get the value of x, y, and z. So simple. Fine, so basically we said find the missing elements. So the answer is j4, j6, and j11. So just now I've explained you, same way I have put it over here. So when you write the three simultaneous equation, so these are your three simultaneous equation, you get it. Solve the three simultaneous equation values. So you will get the value of J4, J6 and J11. I hope this particular problem is clear to all of you. Fine, let us move towards quiz two. A power system with three buses and three lines has a series impedance of J.02 per unit and line charging admittance of J.05 per unit find Y33 of the Y bus, okay? So how will you find out this guys? Just do it, just have, have a thought and just I'm giving you a few, uh, few seconds to solve it. Uh, you have all the values with you, you have a half line charging value and you have the you know, series admittance value. So you, I have given you impedance, so be very, very careful. The question says series impedance, so don't forget to take it uh, or inverse of it and just solve it and just quickly tell me the value of Y33.
okay i hope a uh, few of you would have already solved so let us see what is the answer fine so uh, we basically when we say a power system with three buses three lines that means if you have three buses 1 2 3 one is going to 2 two is going to 3 and three is back to 1 so all these values are j point 02 so take the inverse of it will give you the admittance and the line charging admittance is j point 05 so even if you do divided by point 25 anyhow two lines will be added to a particular bus so you get back to j point 05 so in either form you can take it a simple network we can see like that fine so the answer is minus j 99.95 per unit how many of you have got it fine so please do it that see how many of you have got the answer if you have got it very good and if not let us see how to solve it fine so y33 is nothing but because two lines are connected to every bus so if you have a bus that, that uh, i have already told you that it is this is your bus and you have one bus which is going like this then this is coming like this so if this is your bus 1 bus 2 and bus 3 so every line will have a half line charging admittance so this particular bus will have a value of j point 02 this bus also will have a j point 02 is it impedance so don't forget to convert into an admittance okay so j point 02 and j point 02 suppose any any line I, i'm talking about y33 so i'm bothered about y33 y33 will be this so basically my line charging admittances are given as j1.5 okay so line charging admittances are given as j1 j.05 so this also j.05 and similarly this side also j.05 okay so here if you have to know the y33 so in this particular form you can see the y33 is going to be okay this particular impedance this particular impedance plus this half line charging admit so this gives you 1 divided by j.02 this also will be 1 divided by 0.2 and the half line charging admittances which will add up if you want to write it because directly given line charging admittances so directly i can write it down over there fine j.05 so that what that's what you get the answer over here i hope it is uh, clear for all of you fine thank you Uh, i hope all of you have understood the basic concept of y bus with an inspection method next lecture we'll see how this uh, y bus will get affected when there are regulating transformer present in the transmission line okay thank you guys have a nice day